On June 17, 2002, astronomers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology discovered that a small asteroid had flown past the Earth just 120,000 kilometers away. This shard of rock measured between 50 and 120 meters in diameter and was traveling at some 38,000 kilometers per hour. If it had actually collided with our planet, the disaster would have been simply devastating. The impact of an asteroid on the surface of the Earth is possibly the greatest threat faced by this planet's inhabitants. It is also the most improbable. The violent transformations of the very ground we trod form an important part of the Earth's creative dynamic. A dynamic that long ago generated the conditions for life to emerge. A dynamic which allowed man to appear. A dynamic that is certain to continue its unalterable course. August 26, 1883. The legendary volcano Krakatoa explodes with such fury that the map of the Pacific Ocean will never be the same again. The eruption caused 35 meter high tidal waves that surged as far as 13,000 kilometers. 36,000 people died. A cloud of ash shrouded the planet for a year. This lake near Chicago was formed over a period of several thousand years. These, on the other hand, in Bolivia, Chile, were created in two days, on the 21st and 22nd of May, 1960, during one of the most powerful earthquakes ever recorded. It registered 9.5 on the Richter scale. Its fury moved entire mountains and formed new rivers. Shortly afterwards, a giant tidal wave destroyed everything in its path. Thousands of homes, trees, animals, and human beings. Once again, the Earth received a kind of geological facelift. Such creative violence entails horrible tragedy for living things on this planet. However, at the same time, it generates new ways, new forms of life, new habitats. The Earth, after all, is a dynamic, living thing. The Sahara Desert, one of the most inhospitable places on the planet. Vast plains of sand. Dunes swept by unpredictable winds, ratifying the extreme conditions of its inhabitability. But it wasn't always that way. Once upon a time, these sandy climes were crisscrossed by raging rivers. The mountains were covered with forests, and a remarkable number of different animals and plants thrived in an essentially perfect environment. This was a dense jungle, teeming with life. But that was 200,000 years ago. Since then, the Earth has carefully redesigned the land and created a wholly unique panorama. Are these catastrophes or manifestations of evolution? Earth destroys and recreates so whimsically. It does so over enormous periods of time, or very quickly, with almost always surprising results and with purely physical mechanisms. Human interpretation of the Earth's behavior is hardly unanimous. 
Facing those who defy her inexorable destructive rigor are those who think of Mother Earth as a fabulous system, defined in essence by its very evolutionary capacity. That is the basis for the controversial theory of Gaia. Gaia was the name given to a rather romantic theory, one that might seem more poetic than scientific, by the British scientist James Lovelock. His inspiration was Gia, the oldest goddess known from Greek mythology. Lovelock set forth a kind of metaphor in which everything, air, rivers, oceans, rocks, and living things, were all integral parts of a most perfect harmony that formed one unique entity. Since man appeared on Earth, he has tried to dominate it, tame it. Crops, mines, settlements. They have all changed the face of the planet at unpredictable speed. However, the Earth continues on its evolutionary path, producing great catastrophes that are like battles in which human beings can do nothing. The very ground we walk on continues to be an uncontrollable enigma. Up until now, we have been concerned with creating environments that can protect us against natural threats. We are able to predict in part the behavior of the atmosphere, and we can foresee volcanic activity. There will come a time, probably quite far off, when we can accurately predict seismic movement, though the best we can do today is try to palliate as best we can its effects. The 18th of April, 1906, 5.13 a.m., an intense earthquake rattles the city of San Francisco. It registered 8.4 on the Richter scale, the equivalent of the destructive force of six million tons of TNT. In only 47 seconds, the city was essentially razed. The 17th of October, 1989, San Francisco is once again the venue. This time, the magnitude is 7.1. 15 seconds were more than enough to cause 27 major fires, destroy hundreds of buildings, and kill 300 people.